Yeah, I know the hellfire I'm about to bring down upon myself right now, but I'm willing to do it. I'm not really a shit talker on YouTube. I don't really make controversial videos, and although I don't think this is a controversial video, I think people will take it the wrong way. And I'm willing to deal with that. Also, I know I have a drink on hand normally, but I'm out of beer, and I drink all this Crown Royal. I got uh, Jameson that's gone. Bone, I'm bone dry. Now, with the Bleach anime returning, a small excitement, a, a big excitement happened. I'm really excited for the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Uh, but then the creeping thought in the back of my mind said, oh yeah, I gotta deal with Orihime again. And truth be told, Orihime in the Thousand Year Blood War arc is probably one of my favorites because of how I don't hate her as much. But I wanted to make a video saying the problem that I have with Orihime. So hello, ladies, gentlemen. Orihime stands. We're here to talk about the problem with Orihime. And I loved Bleach growing up. I don't have a thing for hating on Bleach. I love Bleach. I hate on the fans sometimes, and I hate on the show sometimes, because I'm self-aware. It wasn't the best thing in the world. But out of the big three, I've only ever watched Naruto a little bit, and then fully watched Bleach. And right now I'm working through One Piece, but yeah. Like, I used to run a VHS tape at night, at like, before I went to bed at 7 o'clock, and it would record all the way up to about 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. And Bleach played in that time slot so I can watch Bleach every day. Well, that and the oblongs because I didn't really try to watch that, but it was the first thing to show up, so I guess I watched the oblongs. In this video, we will list down the problems that I have personally with Orihime, and I think that are pretty good points. Uh, and I haven't really heard that much argument about it. So go ahead and like, share, and comment on the video, and unless you're an Orihime stan and you absolutely already dislike this video and you're moving on to the next one. But with all that in mind, here we go. Also for new subscribers or people who haven't watched my videos, I don't normally keep this mustache. Uh, it, this is a joke from the last video and I just didn't want to shave it because I actually kind of like it. Orihime was the main focus of an arc that I didn't really care about at the beginning uh, when it got started. And that's one of my biggest issues with Bleach was the repetitiveness of the stories and characters or the things that Ichigo goes through. Ichigo loses his powers, Ichigo gets a new power. Ichigo can't beat this big guy, but he trains his new power and then get, he beats the new guy. New guy's not really the main problem, but the bigger guy is the main problem. Oh, hey, the bad guy at the beginning now is a good friend and is fighting alongside Ichigo. The girl gets stolen and then is taken to a different land where Ichigo has to go and travel to and then fight all new types of cool bad guys with his friends and then rescue the girl. The next arc, girl gets kidnapped and taken away to a different land and Ichigo and his friends have to go and fight new and crazy bad guys in order to rescue the girl. But the second time around, there was one difference. Hey guys, Dakota Broski here from the future. And for this part, it may seem a little jumbled. What had happened was, is I thought that Orihime just willingly left because she thought she was gonna endanger her friends, but when in fact she was wearing a bracelet and Ukiyota really did just, just straight up capture her. And she was wearing this bracelet to where nobody would be able to sense her uh, presence and whatnot, and she could just say her goodbyes and then leave. I had completely forgot about that part, but it doesn't take away from the fact that I think the Soul Society arc was a lot more interesting than the Wake of Mundo arc and it was repetitive and Orihime was the focus. So that still stands, just I can't say that Orihime is dumb and left by herself. Okay, we good? We good. Ichigo was clawing at the dirt, trying to get Rukia to stay in the world of the living, on the verge of death, just losing all of his powers. Ichigo, after losing his powers, could have just walked away. He could have told Udahata, like, you know what, I'm done, you know, uh, she's gone back home, she's fine, I'm back to my normal life, everything's good. But Rukio did so much for him, he felt obligated to go to the Soul Society because Rukia had a, he had a debt to Rukia that he had to repay. He grinded to get his Soul Reaper powers back and went to the Soul Society. He took a team which included Orihime and went to the Soul Society to save Rukia. There was so much more passion in the first rescue arc than the second rescue arc. Although the second one was pretty cooler because you were fighting Espadas and whatnot and everybody had boosted up cool new powers. But it felt like the focus of the main goal of going to Wakamunda to rescue Orihime was overshadowed by it's just Ichigo going to Wakamunda to fight a bunch of cool new baddies. Which was already happening in Katakura Town in the first place. That's where he fought Grimjow, Ikaku fought and used his Bankai. There's so much cool stuff going in already. We didn't necessarily need Wake of Moon though, but like it was just there to make everything convenient. That's another topic for the story of Bleach. Now, one small little detail that I didn't like about Orihime, and it's about, I'm not saying this is, goes against the actual video scripting or the, the very critiquing of the script, 
but this is my personal like vendetta against Orihime. So this is spoilers for the very, 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 very end of the manga, like the last chapter. And I'm pretty sure we all know where I'm going with this. Uh, but if you want to skip ahead, then here you go. It's the link, right? Not link, but it's the timestamp right here. All right. So I joked about on Twitter a few years ago when Bleach ended. Uh, I made a trigger tweet uh, that I never knew, but it was the first time I ever did it. But I wanted to trigger some Bleach fans. So I, I posted something about, you know, fuck you, Tate Kubo, Rukia should have won, yada, 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 ooh, ooh, and then all that stuff. And it triggered a lot of people. I'm not saying that it was tasteful, and I'm not, uh, that's why I never did it again, because bait tweets are just really bad. But honestly, I stand true to that. I think Rukia should have won instead of Orihime when it comes to, not, there was never really a best girl in, why do I say girl like that? Is it because of Sydney? There really is never a best girl in, Bleach, a war. There's never like a uh, Naruto never really had one. Um, one Piece never really had one. Uh, the new, more than newer shows are really getting best girl arguments. And the same thing with Bleach. So when at the end of it, things just kind of happen. Like Naruto, things just kind of fell into the place that we were already expecting. The problem with Bleach is that it never really focused on romance or anything like that, or hinted or crushes or anything. So everything kind of fell into the place of the where it was sitting, as in the story. Again, just a not a real critique, just my own personal opinion. And this does not go towards points on the board of going against Orihime. I just, I just want to talk about the ending. And I realize this is the point where people in the video are going to be like, Oh, that's why you hate Orihime because you're such a Rukia stan. Shut up! Let me explain. That is only 12% true. By the way, Hiyori's best girl. I think it would have been great for Ichigo and Rukia to end up together at the very end of Bleach if we were going to go that route because everybody it ended with a time skip and people had kids and there was the, you know, the, the dad rushed ending haircut that Ichigo had and people were together. I wish I would have saw more people together, but that's the rushed ending. Tite Kubo had like five chapters to wrap shit up. Ignore the fact of aging for a second between Soul Reapers and oh, humans. Ichigo IRL probably could have lived out his human life and then went over to be a soul reaper and then continued that. Hell, even in the fucking manga, I forgot all about that. Um, in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, there was a moment where the badass captain went to the world of the living and gave them coupons to go to the soul society because they said, hey, after this, Ichigo probably ain't coming back. They set you up for like, Ichigo's stuck there. Like, sorry, he's gonna be so much, he's gonna use so much of his power and be so connected to the soul society that he's not going to be able to come back down. But you can visit him if you want to. And I was so looking forward, when they dropped that bomb, I was so excited because I thought that was going to be a great way to end Bleach with Ichigo sacrificing another thing, but this time keeping it. In the beginning, he sacrificed his normal life and he got his soul society and normal life together, switched up together. And now it's like, oh, he sacrifices his normal life for real. He's going to finish that jump of just like, Normal life is goodbye. I am now a full-fledged soul reaper, but we see how that went. Anyways, I think a big part of Bleach in the very beginning was the fact that this guy who could just see ghosts became a soul reaper and the whole show was based off of his disconnect from his real life to being a soul reaper, a substitute soul reaper, and trying to balance that life. And a big part of the connection between his world and the soul society world and life as a soul reaper was always Rukia. So I feel like attaching himself to that connection would have been nice. But no, Orihime is the... It, it. I would have been fine with Tatsuki. I would have been fucking fine with Totsky if he got together with Totsky. Why not? Why not? But that's just my personal little vendetta against like, what it, that's, my, that's my own emotional gripe. But now back to the real reasons why I don't like Orihime on paper. Like that was bar talk, this is office talk. Compared to so many characters, I think I, I dislike Orihime the worst. It's not really, she really did much to begin with. I mean, she healed and she shielded and her attacks were absolutely garbage. But because she's so attached and so close to the main cast, it, that, that's what bugs me the most. Because I don't think she really did much except for maybe heal a few people or save a few people that could have been saved probably by themselves anyways. Hell, she felt, at most times in this arc, she felt like a fucking side character. And the only time she really stepped out of that side character-esque in the background was when she was talking to Ichigo or she was trying to heal somebody. When she first entered the Soul Society, she was knocked down power scaling wise. So was Chad. Uryu was probably the second strongest there. But with that, 
Orihime improved her powers a little bit, but Chad came full blown. When he went the way go Mundo, he fucking wrecked house compared to when he first got his first fight in Soul Society and got knocked out. Now I know in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, she gets another boost, she trains a little bit, and she is doing pretty good. Uh, so I'm not talking about the Thousand Year Blood War arc. When the, start, when the show starts airing, I, I'll do a reread of it and then maybe talk a little bit more about it. But for right now, I'm basically just judging Orihime from the show. Hell, at the beginning of the Soul Society, uh, uh, at the beginning of the Substitute Soul Reaper arc, if Orihime would have transferred to another character or at least swapped characters from being a main protagonist, I would have been fine. You got your brother arc and you got your little leak spin gif, you're fine. What else do you want? When we are first introduced to Orihime, we get one of the, probably one of the best arcs in the first part of it. There's two really great arcs that involve some of the main cast. We have an arc focused on Orihime's bro dead brother, and we have an arc focused on Chad and the bird. Both were really amazing in their own rights. I had fun with the arc. She, Orihime made up with her brother, she had her memories wiped, and then we moved on but she never forgot the same way with Chad. Now these were the two characters that got the, that were exposed as the most spiritual pressured humans in the town. And they later got powers. I'm believing, I'm gonna pretend that it's because they're just so badass and they just had the most spiritual pressure like Ichigo did and it had nothing to do with the goddamn stupid ass Aizen twist. But that's just me. Chad had an encounter with a bird that was being hunted by a hollow and then Rukia helped him out defeat the hollow and that was great. And it had a lot more, had a lot more emotional draws to it, um, and action. Same thing with Orihime and her dead brother. Which props to him. He survived for like what ten years without getting eaten by a hollow. So Ichigo and Rukia show up to save Tatsuki and Orihime from the brother. They had a big moment. Everything's fine. Tatsuki was being a pretty badass, big badass. And then they both went away. So like I said, these are the two people with the most spiritual pressure that they're showing is Orihime and Chad. Now this leads me to my final and biggest problem with Orihime that I have about the show and the writing. And that I would have done differently, but I'm not Tite Kubo. In my honest opinion, I think Tatsuki should have gotten the powers at the very beginning of the Soul Substitute Soul Reaper arc instead of Orihime. Hear me out, Tatsuki not being able to help out Orihime from a hollow twice could have really done some emotional, like, you know, inspiration there, some damage. Like, you know, I can't fucking help my friend again, or she remembers it and she goes, I can't help my friend again. And this would have been a really great intro for Tatsuki to get powered. Tatsuki has martial arts experience and is more brave and headstrong than Orihime. And I get why we didn't really do that because there's already, Chad's already a fist fighting, headstrong kind of fighter. And everything was a lot more hands-on and we never really had a support character. And it's not like they didn't have the ability to make really cool hands-on fighting uh, other than Chad who just punched things. Yoroichi is one of the best examples of like how far you can stretch martial arts in Bleach uh, with her whole body. She turned to a fucking cat and just started whipping at asses. But Tatsuki didn't have the big background. She didn't have the sad background or the spiritual item or whatever. Hell, I'm pretty sure the excuse that Aizen, which I'm believing didn't happen, uh, but for the sake of believing, Aizen said that the reason why Chad and Orihime began to get powers because they were too close to Ichigo, which he had done something to him, and they got powers because of his influence with them. Tatsuki was with Ichigo more than Orihime, I believe, and then she just never had a tragic past, I guess. But that could have been written in. Tatsuki really did get shit on this whole fuck. I'm just realizing how bad she got shit on. So Orihime's powers were shield, healing, and then attack, and the attack was... And that was the, uh, we didn't really have that in the team of Ichigo, so we kind of needed that, I guess. And I know she gets pretty stronger in the Thousand Year Blood War, but again, I'm talking about the anime. I thought that Tatsuki was just a better character than Orihime. I thought she was less annoying, I thought she was more interesting, I wanted to know more about her, and I wanted to see her do more action things because she was a fighter. And honestly, when I first started watching Bleach, I thought the same thing. I'm like, why is Orihime getting powers and not, not Tatsuki? The dynamic between her and Ichigo was a lot more interesting than the dynamic of Orihime and Ichigo. Hell, growing up longer with Ichigo than Orihime. Hell, what even excites me more is the fact that if Tatsuki was introduced to the story as a main character, or one of the crew with Ichigo, the similarities in martial arts and hands-on abilities would have been great being introduced to Yoroichi. And Tatsuki could have became one of the really big badass players if trained by Yoroichi because of the similar styles of just hands-on combat. And don't bring up the fake Katakota Town. That was just the only closest thing I'm gonna get to badass Tatsuki. And it was Sentai.
And that's it. That's really the only reasons and rhymes and reasons I really don't like Orihime. From beginning to end of her character in the anime, maybe she redeemed herself in the Thousand Year Blood War. I can't remember. I just know that from watching the anime and growing up with it, I always felt I didn't like Orihime. I never liked her. It was never a, it was never even like a, a best girl war. It was just I didn't care. <laughs> Maybe I brought some new light in. Let me know what you guys think about Orihime or maybe uh, it, what things you would have done differently with the story of Bleach or with Orihime as a character to make her more likable and bearable. Uh, share some moments you didn't like, share some moments you do like. I really love, I, 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 I know I'm shitting on Bleach right now, but I really do love Bleach. It was a big part of my childhood and it's a big part of me now. And I absolutely am so happy with it. And I'm so excited for the new anime to return. And I'm just, so if you want to hear more about talking about Bleach and whatnot, like, comment, and subscribe. I want to share some moments, some of my favorite moments about the Bleach anime and manga. Um, if you want some more content about me talking about Bleach, I ranked the entire openings from beginning to worst, and maybe when the new opening comes out, I'll tell you where the new ones lay out. That video needs some love, actually, just if you want to, if you want to go, if you want to go. I mean. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit, when you subscribe, if you haven't already, Oh, so sweet. Hit the notification bell and turn on all notifications that way you get notified by me. And uh, it, it's mostly Comey son, I'm not gonna lie. But with that being said, take care and enjoy. I'm so sorry, Bleach fans. I want to say thank you to all my Patreons at the moment. From the bottom up, thank you Noah Howard, Connor Baumgartner, Douglas Whitaker, Lee Watts, Payne Patchett, Sis. And at the very top tier, Fabian Winlin. Thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. You guys have been amazing helping me out. And you guys help the motivation for two uploads a week. You guys are amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.